in the middle of a slide, feel free to raise your hand. He will, he will answer questions. He'll kind of take you through that. A lot of you have seen my presentation, I think, but I'm going to give it very briefly for those who haven't been here to kind of just kind of give you an outline of what is being uh, contemplated as it relates to structure, uh, sort of the new nuances as we continue to work with the Illinois Finance Authority and the Illinois Housing Development Authority to provide certain uh, aspects to, for particularly local communities so that they can uh, have the ability to plug in uh, and not have uh, and pool their resources to reduce their costs and increase the efficiencies of their local program. With that, I'd like to introduce Cisco the Rest. Thank you guys. It's, um, sorry, it's the afternoon, it's dark, there's a PowerPoint. If this were a chemistry <laughs> class, I'd be out. So, um, no, I, I really appreciate it. I, I want to kind of walk through some stuff. Some of it would be reviewed for you guys, some maybe not. But um, yeah, just jump in at any time. Uh, if I skip over something or it raises an issue, this is it's more fun if it's a conversation and uh, hopefully more helpful. Um, but thanks to Craig uh, for having me down or, or over here. Uh, it's fabulous. Uh, it's actually it's great to be. I was, uh, there's some really exciting things happening here in, in Illinois, and, and it's great to get a chance to be here. Uh, Steve Wall, he's a we're former uh, alums of the same graduate school, and we've been in email contact for a while, and so I'm, I'm glad to be here, here and, and uh, obviously to all of you guys for work that's going on to, um, to move the agenda, not just on pace, but other things. I think it's important to start at any conversation about property size clean energy to say that it is a tool. It is not magic pixie dust that somehow changes the economics of energy or solar or somehow changes people's minds. It is an important tool. What I want to kind of get to here is why it's important and how you kind of put it together and how you use it, but also to understand that it only works in the context of a bunch of other stuff that you do. Um, and how you integrate it, the work that you do, both legislatively, the work that you do uh, locally, the marketing, the engagement, it is important, the other incentives that are available. So I, I want to start doing, uh, I want to uh, just sort of say that at the outset. Um, I, uh, I, I used to work in the U.S. Department of Energy. Um, I've worked for the legislature of the state of California. I worked for, I was actually, I, went, I was at the Department of Energy in the federal government, then I went to the state, then I went to the city of Berkeley. So my next stop is going to have to be the Mosquito Abatement District. But um, luckily I found out something else I could do. So I, I left the city a couple of years ago, and, and what I kept hearing about was what Berkeley was, was putting together, and what I helped uh, get together in Berkeley. Uh, and a lot of cities and counties and others said, hey, that's great, but we don't, we got to understand it, and I don't really want to do any work. Um, I don't want to do any paperwork, I don't want to hire any staff, is there some way? So what, what renewable funding came about was really as a way to try and address uh, the interest in PACE and the realization that what, what's needed is, is to, to create a, a wheel or a couple of wheels that they can be attached to the car in various ways. It, it is not a one-stop solution, it is a set of, of, of tools to use to try and implement PACE that kind of help get through the issues uh, that are inevitably going to come up um, and let you focus then hopefully on how you integrate the local community, how you make this successful and not have to spend um, six months uh, in small rooms with bond lawyers, which is um, currently have a, there's no offense at all to bond lawyers. Uh, <laughs> um, okay, so the other reason I'm here, uh, a lot of people have great ideas, um, and I'm not, you know, a lot of people have bad ideas. But a lot of ideas become sort of all of a sudden kind of issues that people talk about, whether good or bad, because they happen at certain moments, and in grad school they call it a policy window. And you can bang your head against the wall for a long time. And we are in a moment where a policy window opened. And the reason it opened um, is for several reasons. The first is, my entry to it, carbon. You know, global warming, carbon emissions, the issues around the climate were significant. Uh, in fact, 35% of the energy being used uh, and the carbon emissions uh, being emitted are from buildings in this country. It is also a matter of cost. People are spending a lot of money to heat buildings, to power buildings. And they're wasting a lot of that energy, and so they're wasting a lot of money. So we have, we have money out the door, we have carbon out the door, and this seems like something we should solve. And then, of course, so that, that became a big issue. That started our work. And then something else happened, which is we talked about the recession, which is really bad, and hopefully starting to end. But in the construction industry, it's a depression. A quarter of the U.S. work, it's actually 24.7% as of this month, as of January. 24.7% of the U.S. construction industry is out of work. 
uh, in some places it's as high as 50%. And the issue is now we have a massive unemployment issue, people who are hungry for work, who actually know how to work on buildings. We have a serious issue around the climate where we're trying to reduce carbon. And we have people who are trying to save money, businesses trying to save money by saving energy. And so the reason, you know, there's lots of ideas that have come out in various places, um, but I think it's a confluence of those events. For 30 years, we've known that we can save money in energy in buildings. And we've certainly known that energy efficiency is a no-brainer, and yet people weren't doing it. So I think PACE came about at the moment when people were trying to find the solution to that, and it sort of jumped up because there was a moment where people were looking for some solutions. Um, it's not organic. The reason, of course, that we've been banging our head against this wall for 30 years is that we are asking people essentially to do something we've been trained since birth not to do, which is to pay up front for something that you can actually normally pay for over a long period of time in small increments. So let me try and sort of bring that down to Earth. Um, how many people here have uh, a cell, an iPhone? Let's start with that. Anybody have an iPhone? Um, it dropped me three times on my calls coming down here, so I'm, I've had it with the iPhone. But I have an iPhone. How many people have cell phones? Anybody have a cell phone? Okay, how many of you would have a cell phone if you had to write a check for $28,000? So then I have a deal. No, it turns out I got my cell phone. I got my cell phone. It's actually my wife and my phone. Um, she has a regular phone. I have an iPhone. And in fact, it seemed kind of expensive when I bought it. $299. Um, it's actually three thousand two hundred ninety-nine dollars because you have a two-year contract, right? But they're, you know, they're smart. They didn't make you pay three thousand two hundred ninety-nine dollars. And over twenty years, if nothing else changed, I'll spend close to thirty thousand dollars on my cell phone minutes. Of course, inflation will actually make that higher. Who knows? But I have a deal for all of you with cell phones. How about I give it to you for half price? Half price. You can have exactly the same phone, all the guarantees, all the services, half price. But you got to write me a check for fourteen thousand dollars. And then we scratch our heads and wonder why nobody gets solar or does energy efficiency. You'll save a bunch of money. You're going to pay it. It's economically irrational. And we're all lemmings jumping off the cliff because we're paying monthly and it's easy and why would I bother? My utility bill is almost identical to my cell phone bill, which is sort of scary in itself. But, <laughs> but, um, but I am, you know, as most people, no, not particularly more likely to spend... Uh, buy my electricity 20 years up front than I am my cell phone minutes up front. And if you think of nothing else after I'm done today and after Craig's done talking about how we actually try to make this happen in Illinois, I think you should remember we've got to solve this problem. Because if absent, you need to do other things too, this is not the only solution as we talked about, but absent solving the upfront cost barrier, you can't solve the energy efficiency barrier. You can't, it's called, um, there's actually a term for it which is escaping me now, but it's just, it's 30 years we've been banging our head against the wall, guys, we've got to fix this problem. So that's where pace comes in. And I love this slide because it says breakthrough and because I didn't say breakthrough because somebody